Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Rob Miller, Superintendent of Bixby Public Schools. We thank all of you for joining us today for this live Facebook event. Uh, obviously, the last seven to 10 days have been very difficult and unsettling for many people in our community, across our state, and across our nation. Uh, the coronavirus, the COVID-19, is an unprecedented medical crises uh, for our nation and state. Uh, I think all of us have probably more questions than we have answers at this point. So the purpose of this presentation is to simply share what we know now, give you some information about next week and the week after while our schools are out, hopefully help you plan, uh, knowing that full well that things can change because this is a rapidly changing situation and information that we share with you today may change before next Tuesday. And uh, we appreciate your grace and flexibility and understanding as we navigate these uncharted waters uh, moving forward into this. Uh, we want to make sure that you have an opportunity to ask questions as well. Uh, we direct you to our Bixby PS website that has updated information about the coronavirus and our response as a district to those decisions being made ahead of us but we also know that we can not anticipate all the questions that there may be out there in our community and with our families. So please ask those questions today. Uh, time is gonna limit the amount of questions that we'll be able to uh, address today. But uh, again, we're gonna update our frequently asked questions on our website. So continue to look there over the next few days and hopefully we'll get those uh, answered for you. Uh, and then throughout next week, as we learn more information from the State Department and the state and federal government, uh, we'll update that information for you as well. Let's start with what we know now. As you're aware, last Monday, the State Board of Education, based on a recommendation from Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister, uh, ordered the closure or the cessation of operations at all public schools in Oklahoma through April 6th of this year in essence, extending two weeks on to spring break. I want to be very clear that this cessation of operations includes all non-essential activities, which means that we will not be providing any instructional activities over the next two weeks. Uh, there'll be no grading of assignments. Uh, there will be no activities on our schools at all during this time. That includes extracurricular activities, practices, uh, anything that Im involves bringing students on campus, with one exception that I'm going to talk about here in just a minute. So that means we are closed. And after uh, Tuesday, uh, we will not have anyone at our school sites to answer phones or do anything else. That will all be coordinated through the district office uh, using a skeleton crew, just the essential staff that we need. Uh, to pay bills and keep operations going here in the district. That's the intent behind this directive from the State Department is to uh, implement the social distancing that the CDC has advocated for. And in order to do that and to do it effectively, we need everyone's cooperation and please staying away from our campuses. That includes our certified staff, our teachers and administrators. We know many of them, and if you're listening and you're a teacher, we know many of you are anxious to get back into the classroom. This is what you love to do and you love working with your students, but we're going to ask you to stay at home and to avoid making those trips to the school uh, for that reason. Likewise with our support staff, although the uh, structure is a little bit different, we spent some time this morning talking about which of those would be essential functions and we're going to contact those individuals directly. If you're not called by your department head or your principal, uh, then just assume that you are off until April 6th. I wanna be clear that no Bixby employee will see a reduction of pay and benefits during this time as a result of the closure. So even though you may not be asked to come to school, you will receive your full paycheck and we're making arrangements on, on how the, the logistics behind that might work in terms of uh, additional leave or, or things of that nature. Again, we're waiting for uh, clarification from the state in terms of how to do that legally. But I want to assure every employee uh, that your pay and compensation will not be affected as a result of this closure. Uh, moving forward, uh, we also know that uh, 
after speaking with the state superintendent this morning, just got off a call with her just a few minutes ago, that they are already looking at what this might look like if school was, uh, or school closure was extended beyond that April 6th date. Uh, I think we all have to be realistic because of the uncertainty surrounding the coronavirus and the spread. Uh, it's just starting here in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, and so we need to be realistic in that school may uh, not return for the rest of this year. We have to plan for that. Now, what that looks like, we're not entirely sure yet. And so I understand people's uh, anxiety, uh, uncertainty based on that. But uh, it is my belief anyway that even if uh, the school closure continues beyond April 6th, that we will have instructional activities at that point uh, moving forward. We just have that's too long a period of time for our students to go without instruction. We've got high school seniors that need to fulfill graduation requirements in order to graduate. Uh, so we know that we're going to have to provide some instruction. We don't know exactly what that will look like. It will certainly look differently at the secondary level uh, or at the high school level where we've got one-to-one -one initiative and we've got Canvas as a learning management system and it's a, it's a better vehicle for teachers to communicate and send activities and assignments and to grade those for students than it would for our elementary students. But we will have more information next week. The State Board of Education meets again next Wednesday, that's March 25th, and they will be looking at a couple options uh, and this discussion will come up then. So I anticipate next Friday, if we do another Facebook uh, live call, we'll have more detailed information for you at that time about what that might look like. Uh, again, I want to just re uh, re reassert the fact that uh, because we've had students who have come up and have wanted to get in the gym and wanted to get on our practice facilities, uh, we really want uh, our students and staff to stay away during this time. Our maintenance crews have worked extremely hard over the past week to disinfect and clean all of our workspaces. And it kind of defeats the purpose if we have people coming back up and, and potentially contaminating uh, our workspaces uh, in this time. But uh, we anticipate that whenever we come back to school, if that's April 6th or sometime later, that everything will be clean and disinfected and in good shape. But again, we need uh, cooperation of everyone in order to do that. Relative to state testing, we uh, got confirmation today that the state of Oklahoma has requested a waiver from the federal government for state testing. You may have read about this in the newspaper. What that means is that we will not administer the Oklahoma State Testing Program to any of our students in grades three through eight or our high school students. So the ACT exam that was scheduled for April 8th has been postponed. I don't know if it will be rescheduled at a later date. I know some of our seniors and high school students are concerned about advanced placement testing. That question came up this morning as well. What we know about that is the college board who operates the advanced placement testing has put out limited information. They're still saying that AP testing will take place in that same window of time from May 5th through, I'm sorry, May 4th through March or May 15th, excuse me but that they're also looking at some options for students to take those online or at home. Uh, not sure how that would necessarily work, but again, we that's the only information that we have right now. Certainly, if we're going to move forward with AP testing, uh, a lot of our families need to know how do their students receive the remaining AP instruction in order to be well prepared for those tests. So we understand that there are some questions that we need to answer. Relative to the eighth grade reading test, uh, many of you know that that is tied to the uh, issuance of a driver's permit for 15 year olds. Uh, the state is looking into that and I believe is going to make a recommendation to the board for a waiver of that requirement, as well as the third grade RSA or the Reading Sufficiency Act that requires that students pass the third grade reading test in order to be promoted to fourth grade. I believe that waivers are forthcoming on those issues. So I wouldn't worry about anything related to state testing. I think those waivers will come through. Uh, the state A to F report card grade that we typically get in the fall, uh, that obviously will not happen next year if we don't have testing since much of that is tied to uh, student performance on those state testing. 
Food service. Uh, one of our most important responsibilities during this cessation of operations is to make sure that our students still have uh, meals, especially those that are on free and reduced lunch. But we've also received uh, approval from the United States um, Department of Agriculture to provide meals for all students in the Bixby community, whether or not they're students of Bixby. So we will be providing a breakfast and lunch for any student who wants one. Uh, and that's uh, according to the guidelines, it's any student below the age of 18, but if they're a Bixby student and they're, they happen to be 19, uh, then we're gonna issue a meal as well. For students that are special ed or on an individualized education plan, that extension actually goes to 21 years old. So we will start this on Tuesday, which was our first day coming out of the break. Uh, it will run from 8 to 11 a.m., 8 to 11 a.m., and what we're going to do is we're going to bundle up the breakfast and lunch so that parents will only have to make one pickup each day. You can pick up one set of meals for each child in your home. Uh, we're going to have two distribution points that you can come to. The first of those is our ninth grade center, which is on the south side of the river over by the high school across from Central Elementary. The address is 301 Riverview. And then the YMCA on the north side of the river at 134th and Memorial. We will have teams set up from, again, 8 to 11, starting on Tuesday next week, to distribute food to families who come. To help us with estimating the number, because, again, we don't want to make too much food, and we want to make sure that we've got adequate food for the, those who need it, we're going to be sending out a survey link by text to all homes after the conclusion of this call. Please take, uh, it should take you about 15 seconds to do. We're simply asking for the number of meals that you're gonna ask or number of children that we wanna serve and the location that you wanna pick up from, whether that be the ninth grade center, the south location, or the YMCA, the north location. Again, that's something we want our community to take advantage of uh, and we are prepared to create as many meals as we need to in order to make this happen. If you have additional questions on that, please just type those in the comments and we'll, we'll get to those as well. Uh, enrollment, I know this is a busy time of year uh, on enrollment. We've gotten quite a few questions about what about pre-K and kindergarten enrollment, which was scheduled to begin on March 30th. Uh, the honest truth is we know that families are dealing with an awful lot and we've got families that are uh, losing jobs and, and dealing with things much more significant than just the enrollment. So it is something that we can pro postpone and we will postpone uh, to a later date. Not sure what that date will be. Much of that will depend on what the State Board of Education decides next week. But for those of you who are concerned about making sure you get your enrollment packets in next week for March 30th for pre-K and K, go ahead and relax and we'll send out additional information in the future uh, about when that will be rescheduled. But it'll be sometime in early April, even if uh, the closure of schools continues beyond that point. Uh, that's really the main issues that I had. I'm going to look now at some of the questions that are coming in and see if we can address some of those. Uh, uh, first question on here is, will we be getting schoolwork and assignments for our kids at some point? As I said earlier, that depends on what the State Board of Education does here in a few days, next Wednesday. If they decide that yes, we are going to uh, keep schools closed, but provide instruction, then at that point, we're gonna work with our teachers and we'll develop a plan for uh, doing the best that we can with instruction for the remainder of that school closure time. So we'll have more information next week. AP tests I've already talked about. Uh, relative to elementary and intermediate students who don't have laptops or don't have access to the internet uh, because I suspect that much of the work that we would send home would either be through Google Classroom or online or via email. For those families who do not have internet connections, we again will have to make arrangements for either packets to be delivered uh, to homes or a uh, place where parents can pick those up. Uh, again, it's 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 speculation at this point. I don't want to put out too much information. It might be confusing, but for now, just kind of wait and see, and we'll know at the end of next week what that's going to look like. Uh, 
Had a question here about fundraisers at individual schools. That is something that the principals uh, working with their PTOs will have to work out. So if you've given money for a fundraiser and are expecting um, cookie dough or something coming in in the next few weeks, uh, I'm sure we'll work up a plan for that as well. Will graduation be taking place? That is a huge question. And I know that many of our seniors have been looking forward to prom and graduation for their entire lives. And so I can tell you that it is my uh, intent and certainly our high school administration to do everything within our power to try and make graduation take place. There's just too many unknowns at this point. But whether that means we have a graduation at Oral Roberts University or in Spartan Stadium, uh, I don't know what that might look like. But we certainly will do everything we can to make that a special time for our kids. The prom, which is scheduled, I think, for the second week of April, uh, it's likely that's going to be postponed to a later date. And we're just going to have to wait until we see more information. And I, I hate that. These are heartbreaking decisions. Uh, but it is an unprecedented time and we're having to make decisions uh, for the safety and, and welfare of our students. And so uh, my apologies to all the students uh, who are affected by these decisions. But again, it's it's based on directives that we're getting from uh, the state and federal government. And we don't really have a lot of leeway in some of those issues. Uh, support staff will be paid. I've, I've mentioned that as well. Even if our support staff are not asked to come in, uh, they will continue to get their regular paycheck. Uh, and um, so please do not worry any more about that. Uh, we talked about the eighth grade reading test. Uh, if the decision, somebody's asking about how does this affect the final GPA? Uh, my assumption anyway, and this is just talking with Superintendent Hoffmeister this morning, is that even if the State Department makes the decision to to close schools for the remainder of the school year. Let's look at that, the worst case scenario. Uh, I believe that we will have plans in place to continue instruction. How that looks in terms of grades and grade point averages, uh, we're just gonna have to wait and see, but I am, what I'm gonna tell our teachers is to exercise as much grace and understanding as we possibly can with students, because we know that it's more than just what's happening here in school. Uh, many families have been, uh, will be tremendously affected by this, especially those who maybe work in service industries or restaurants or uh, maybe temporarily laid off and, and living truly from uh, paycheck to paycheck. And so uh, we're very concerned about that. I think that needs to be our focus as we look forward. Uh, talking about school pictures and things like that, I, again, I don't have good answers for that right now. Uh, if school closes, final transcripts to college, great question. We're going to have to research that a little bit more. Uh, and, and I hate to just say I don't have an answer for that yet, but I, I knew going into this that there would be a lot of questions for which we don't have specific answers. And so much of this does depend on what the State Department decides next week in their Board of Education meeting. Will school be permanently out? Uh, how will pass bill? Uh, working on extra projects. So there seems to be a lot of questions about uh, grade point averages and how are grades going to be computed and what activities and assignments will be graded. Uh, again, we're going to be as flexible and issue as much grace as possible so that authorities and uh, we're just going to have to work through that. But I, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time uh, overly concerned about that. We're going to be fair and equitable and do the best that we can with that. Uh, somebody asked just a personal opinion. Do I think uh, students will be back in school on April 6th? I, I hate to speculate on that, but to, just the, the tenor of the conversation that we had with the state superintendent today makes me think that they're leaning towards continuing the cessation of operations, but but loosening that a little bit so that we're able to provide instruction to students. That's the direction I believe that we're going, but uh, please don't take that as gospel because that could change in the next two hours, if not by, by next week. Uh, do we need volunteers? Uh, you know, this is a great community and I've gotten many emails from people uh, from board
think we've got to, oh, there we are. Uh, whatever we need to do uh, to help, uh, there will be a time that we're going to need some volunteers and we don't have a detailed plan yet. Once we start our food delivery next week, uh, there may be opportunities for people to deliver uh, food or, or medicine to, to districts and things like that or to homes, um, but we don't know at this point. Uh, I forgot to mention, and I'll, I'll go back to this, on this coming Tuesday, which again is our first day back, if I haven't mentioned this, we're going to open our main offices in all of our schools from 12 noon to 3 p.m. 12 noon to 3 p.m. on Tuesday, and that is for the purpose of families, parents to come up and pick up meds for their students uh, or any emergency issues. Uh, I want to discourage people to just come up and you know, pick up a jacket that they left in their locker. That's not the purpose of this. We, we want to uh, be mindful of the CDC's guidance on social distancing, uh, and we don't want to expose our schools that have just been cleaned um, to a lot of students unnecessarily. So this truly is for those emergency situations where somebody needs to pick up meds for their child and take those home. So that'll be from 12 to three next Tuesday. If that time does not work for you, then I would encourage you to email your site principal or contact the district office. Uh, our number here is 918-366-2200. Uh, you may or may not get a live body when that when you, when you dial that, but please know that we are checking that voicemail constantly. Uh, so please make sure you leave your full name and a number along with your question and one of